Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I'm taking a break from quilting on the machine and I want to show you how you can make some quilting designs using a set of French curves. Um, I'm getting ready to do a video that has been requested about how to use French curves to make some architectural type quilting designs. Um, I've gone over this just a little bit in a previous video. Um, it was just kind of part of, I believe it was, it might have been the Lone Star Quilt. I don't remember, but I wanted to show you a little bit more detail as was requested about how I come up with these designs and how I use these curves. Now this is a set of French curves. It's a set of eight and I got this at Hobby Lobby back in the early 2000s. Now this set at that point cost me $11.99 and I don't know what they run now, but even then that wasn't, I didn't think it was too bad. Um, and where you can get some ideas for your designs is you can just um, go to like a historical section in your town if you have, like here in the city that I live in, if I go downtown and just walk through the main street of the town, there's a lot of historical buildings and then there's historical buildings that are kind of branched off. And um, so if you go down there, you can see a lot of uh, detail in these buildings. It may be concrete work, it may be iron work, um, it could be some wood. Um, like if you have um, Victorian houses, there's a lot of curly cues and that kind of stuff, uh, filigree type work on uh, Victorian houses. So you can get some ideas from them. You can also just Google um, decorative iron work or Victorian iron work or uh, Victorian architecture, um, that kind of thing. And you can find a lot of ideas. Another thing you can do is go to Dover. Dover has lots of books on um, architectural different kinds of designs. Um, this one is a Victorian ornamental designs. This one's North American Indian motifs, traditional Chinese design, Art Nouveau motifs and vignettes, folk design motifs from India, and decorative ironwork designs and um, you know look around some of the homes and you can see uh, iron gates and stuff and you may find some designs like this and um, I've used all of these books to get ideas for either quilting designs or architectural designs um, for quilting or for applique and um, I've used those in some quilts so and uh, some of the newer books will have a CD that has these designs on there and so you can just print them out and you can resize them to whatever size you want. So if you want to make your own designs you need to have some kind of inspiration like these books or uh, you know take your camera when you're walking through your historic districts in your town, uh, take pictures of um, real life architecture and um, get yourself when you got your French curves, you're going to need some paper. Um, if you're going to print them out on your computer, of course you need computer paper if you want to draft them out and use your French curves, then you're going to need some paper and you can use your printer paper. You can use, like I have a, a sketch pad here and I've got several different sketch pads that are partially used. Um, this one is, it doesn't matter what kind, I just pick them up as they're on sale. This one is a you create this one is doesn't really have a brand name on it so I don't know what that one is this one is a Roselle and then I have a spiral one by Strathmore and this one I've got a lot of different stuff in it and I like this one because I can just flip it back to a clean page and I don't have that crease here on the side that gets in my way. But on these other pages, or these other tablets, what you can do is just tear out the page that you want and um, put it on a smooth surface. Um, like this tabletop has kind of a texture on it, so it's not really the best to use a thin sheet of paper on to draw with. But I could leave it in the tablet and draw on it. 
and they come in different weights of uh, paper this one is 50 pound which your normal uh, paper for your printer is 20 weight or 20 pound weight so um, that's lighter it's tw twice as light as this one this is a heavier paper okay a lot of times what I'll do is just kind of sketch um, something um, let, let's look at Okay, let's look at this book here, and I'll, we'll find, go through here and find something that looks, um, you know, simple enough to kind of do real quick, see if that's possible. And there is a lot of detail in these. Um, one thing you will notice about ironwork or you may notice about ironwork, these pieces are made to connect to each other. And on on this one, you know, you can see how they connect here. In this design, they actually have little pieces that physically connect them together. And more modern designs, you will see they're just welded there. And But you can see this kind of double curly cue. You know, one go in one direction, one go in the other. And... Um, so why don't we try something like that because that is seen repeated it's repeated in this design here and it, it's in a lot of these designs that I see as I flip through <coughs> here's another one there's the double end here <coughs> and I like this one where it goes two different directions I think this would be a good one to try so I'm going to see if I can kind of sketch that out and these are are copyright free, but look at the um, copyright information in the front of the book because it will tell you um, if there's any limitations on the copyright. Um, like a lot of them will say you can use them, uh, provided that you use no more than 10 in the same publication or project. So like if you're doing this in a, in a quilt, you're only allowed to use 10 of these designs in your quilt. Um, so that's, that's, those are some of the limitations of the copyright and that's, you know, that's their right to do that. Otherwise they're free to use for any kind of craft that you want. So this one, this design is actually a little bit, let me move this up a little bit. It comes up a little bit straighter and then it curves. So it kind of comes like this. And then there is a curly Q coming off here. And this one, it, I'm looking at the side here. So sometimes if you put, let's put some, I'm gonna put some marks some, to guide me here. Kind of keep the design contained so that I know where they need to go. And of course, this is probably way bigger than what I need, but okay, we're going to do this. And then I'm just following this design as far as this, there's a curly Q. This actually needs to come up. It starts like right here and then it comes closer to the top. And then this curly Q comes in here. And of course, these are more than just one single line. They're kind of dimensional. And then this will come out. And it comes down and then it curls up. And it has that kind of double curly Q like this. Only this one will curl in. And this one just kind of curls down and out like this. So it goes like this. And what you also need is a good eraser. And um, so I'm j I don't have my good eraser with me. I do have one that's upstairs with my drawing supplies. And I kind of left it up there. So let's um, see if I can get those erased so that they're not throwing me off too much. Okay, so that goes like that. And that looks pretty close to being... And then this curly Q comes in 
quite a ways like that and there is it's kind of fills this angle so it's kind of more of a triangular looking design and of course these are all you have to kind of decide how far apart you want all your pieces too and like this one then it kind of comes swing it swings in like that um, so that one's going to come out kind of like that okay so I've kind of got an outline of how I want this to look and this book does not want to stay open so let me see if I can force it to stay open so I can look at it okay so now I need to get my curves and decide how big do I want this design and what kind of curves are going to fit in there so you just you know grab them and see what is going to fit the curve that you're working on like this one goes pretty well up to this point but then I need to kind of keep changing my curves and use both sides you can flip them around and see that this curve is too tight for in here but it may work really well up here to about that point And then sometimes if you can't find anything that works for you, you just have to freehand it. But usually you can find, there we go, you can find a curve that will work for you pretty well. So just erase the lines you don't need. Now this I need to have it curl in a bit more. So let me keep playing until I can find something that will work really well and I think this will do it and I'm drawing these lines a little bit darker so that I can see see them and they don't have to be exactly the same as what you're seeing in like your inspiration they can be different it doesn't have to be the same just do something that you like Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's see if we can. Let's keep turning this. I want this to turn in more, so let's switch to this side. That looks pretty good. I'm going to change this design just a little bit, I think. Okay, so I've got that. Let's see what we can do over here. Okay, now this one here has a lot of curly cues and stuff in it. So let's see if we can get this to work in a spot. referencing my inspiration here and it's, it's kind of going like this now I'm having trouble with this wire being in the way so um, I'll have to work around that but I think I'll have to 
have to pull that out just a little bit more. And then this comes out, um, yeah, it's about, actually it kind of ends like about here. And then it comes around. So. Okay, you have to also decide how thick you want these. So I'm going to try again here okay now if you enlarge these of course they're going to be wider so okay so we've got all of that and this really kind of comes down down a little bit further so I'm going to go down I'm trying to decide how wide I want this That is three eighths of an inch, and this is a quarter right there. So let me do. I'll do three eighths of an inch. I just kind of like that a little bit better, and then you know use your ruler to make little marks as you go as to how wide you want that. Let me flip this my three-eighths of an inch mark is kind of missing. It's faded out. And then you can either freehand and connect those dots or you can uh, use your your rulers and um, draw those in that way. And you can also, you don't have to keep them the same width all the way around. You can also narrow those as you want to. So let's see how this is going to work. I'm just going to keep adjusting my tool as I go. Oops. If I don't let it slide like that. And just remember I'm wanting the curve. There we go. And then up here, I think I'll just kind of fudge this one in a little bit. Okay. Let me see if I can improve this curl this curve right here make it look a little smoother The thing is, it, it fits real well here, but it doesn't there because now we're at a different, um, kind of at a different angle. So sometimes you can't always use the same part of the template in a different place like that when you've got them looking like this. Okay, now on this one, this curve. to come around and then it's going to meet here let's kind of round that a little bit kind of fill it out however you need to okay so now I have to work on this curl here and there's really not a whole lot of room in there and this just needs to blend in with this here so we're going to do that 
erase this line. And there we go, we have a design. Now this, I'm not happy with this, this is fatter than the rest of it. This one is thinner, so I need to um, stretch this out a little bit. Make it a little bit more substantial there. And here I need to make this a little narrower, so. the part I don't want. So you can keep playing and modifying and you know fine-tuning your designs however you want. This is what I've got so far. Um, you can you know make your the thickness thinner or you can make it wider. Um, you could add more curly cues in here if you want. You want if you wanted to add another one in here. Uh, you can leave it the way it is. Uh, when you finally get it done, take a Sharpie marker and outline it again uh, to make it darker. And then you can um, scan it into a computer and you can make copies and uh, you can play around with the design and see what that would look like if you um, combine these together. Uh, you can also, instead of using just one design, you can combine several of your designs together and come up with something. Um, if you've got, you know, you can make this into a square. Um, this is kind of like a corner design on its own, but you can also um, do, um, you know, put them together to fill in a, a block, a square, or you can put them together to uh, create a border. Um, you can take parts off, like if this, if you're wanting to do a border and this piece is in the way, then, then don't use that section, just ignore it, and um, then you've got, uh, a, you know, a different design. You can just do whatever you want with them, and, um, you know, you've created something unique for your quilt, and um, they're, they're really interesting when you, um, you know, combine them together, you know, can add feathers to them, and um, or add more curls to them um, or you know do a leaf design as if there's uh, maybe ivy or something um, you know crawling up this side of a fence or something you know there's lots of things you can do like look in the um, back at the Lone Star quilt video where I added feathers to kind of fill out the sections that were kind of plain and there, there was just nothing there and I felt I needed more quilting in there, I added feathers so and hearts. So, you know, you can do things like that. Add, add a heart there if you want, you know, when the, if these come together and, you know, there's this big spot here that there's nothing in there, you know, you might want to fill that in with uh, hearts and feathers or swirls or maybe you just want to use this in a, a, an heirloom quilt and you're going to do a lot of background filler and you know use your micro stippling or mctavishing or whatever is your favorite filler design and put that in there and that will you know compress your background and make your your uh, filigree design pop so those are th different things that you can do with french curves and you probably don't need a you know a huge set of them um, I just felt this was a good price for for eight of them and you know I was just getting started and I had no idea what I was going to need for the ideas that I had so I you know bought the set of eight and um, and just use them to you know make all kinds of designs um, I don't you know I haven't taken one and made a design out of just one I flip through until I can find the curve that I like for the design that I'm making. Um, there is I think it's this little one here that has designs that look like feathers in it so that you know maybe you can use these to do feathers. It's got different shapes of curly cues that sometimes comes in handy. Um, you know just play around and see what you can come up with. Okay I scanned. I took this design 
and I outlined it in Sharpie and then I scanned it into my computer and then I opened a Word document and inserted the this design and I scanned it as a JPEG and then um, I inserted this into my Word document and then I um, set it as um, when I formatted it, I formatted it so that the background would be transparent. So there's settings on your on your Word document that you can do that. And it came in as a JPEG, then it's a photo, and so you get picture formatting and all of that. So I just clicked the background and then clicked um, transparent, and that made all the graininess kind of disappear. So anyway, that, that was in the computer, and then I started playing around with ways to lay this out. And here is kind of the first set of uh, designs that I came up with. I just kind of did a frame in here. And this printed out in green, I don't know why, but it did. Um, and I just put, you know, four of them, just kind of rotated them and uh, flipped them. And so I got uh, a frame. And then I just put two together for kind of a corner design. And then I turned them the opposite direction and um, got this design here and then I put eight of them together and did kind of like a block filler here. Um, here we go over some more. This is two that are put together for a triangle and then there's four of them here for you know this could be like a diamond or just a square just kind of put a square on point. Um, here's another filler Here's another triangle. So there's all different kinds of things that you can do with these. Um, put them in your computer, scan them in, um, open your Word document, enter, insert and copy and flip and paste and group them together and you can come up with all different kinds of designs that you can use in your quilts. And then to transfer them, all you have to do is to slide this underneath your fabric. If your fabric is sheer enough or light enough, like if you use a white cotton uh, muslin or just a, a white woven fabric, you, if you have Sharpie on there, you can see that and it will come through okay. I would suggest that you go ahead and trace it on the back side too so that you've got, you know, you can flip it both ways. That way you only need one piece, but you can also make multiple copies of these and you can tape them together and if you want just one big design to use. I tend to just use one and then I will trace it on the back side and then I flip it and rotate it as I need to to get the design in my quilt. So um, then trace that with a water soluble marker and that way you've got the lines to follow and then when you have it all quilted you can just spritz it with water or soak it in a tub of water and get those um, water soluble marks out and then you have your design. Okay, there are other ways that you can use these French curves. If you want, instead of um, using an inspiration um, image and trying to copy that, you can just use the curves that come on these templates and come up with a completely different design. Um, and just, you know, pick any of them that you like and um, <clears throat> just pick any of them that you like and, and try doing something with them. So, um, well, like this one has a really big um, curl in it. If you are looking for something like that, you could use that. Um, if you're looking for some tiny feathers to use in something, you can use these. These, these have two uh, feather type designs in it. It also has some really uh, pronounced curly cues in them. Um, this one is a really good curve. Um, like if you want to maybe use that much of it and then um, say you want to put a curl in there. Um, you could use this one here and just trace around it and then come back out and that gives you something pretty wide so it, it 
doesn't quite fit in there real well, but you could use that. You could also have used this one. So um, I still have my, my good eraser is still upstairs um, in my office. So we'll, we'll just use this. Let's use um, this one instead, maybe. We'll come around like this. And then that gives you kind of a guideline on how you may want to come out of that curl. Um, and then use, use whatever templates that you want to kind of give you the, the look that you're going for. Um, and you may need to use a couple, a couple of different ones, kind of like I did on the other design. I just kept switching around until I got what I what I wanted and then uh, you know just bring that around so I'm not real happy with that if that did not curl curl curve it just kind of made a point so you know you can draw all of these by hand if you want to but having something like these to kind of give you an idea on on different shapes is really comes in handy and there we go. This is the the one I started with. So let's look at that. And I wanted to kind of see what kind of spacing that would give. See this I like the spacing down here. It's it's a little bit too wide up here though, but you can also move it so that it would give you better spacing. So this one is not what I want, so I'm gonna erase that. And the advantage of using these instead of freehanding them is that you get, you get more uh, precise curves. They're not um, wobbly. Like if you did them by hand, they may kind of wobble a little bit, which they, mine do. Um, when I try to do something like this by hand, it'll it'll kind of wobble, and I don't like it as much as if I have something to trace. So here we go. So I've got something like that to kind of get me started, and let's kind of carry that on down. And I'll just keep moving it. And then let's see. Let's put a, a curly Q on the end. And we'll just kind of connect that. So here we've come up with another another design. Now this is just plain. I mean, there's nothing really fancy about it. But I took one of these templates or used a couple of them and came up with an idea of a design that I could use. Now this, of course, you know, if you look at this, if you want to put this one up against it, you've got something like that. You can overlap these if you want to. Uh, you can overlap them as far as you want and um, do different kinds of designs. You can add add your feathers to this if you want feathers. You could add more curly cues. What if we want to put another one in there? Um, this one is actually bigger than that. So let's go ahead and keep using this one here. Got something like that. You can come out with, let's see what else do I have here. You know this one has kind of a circle thing in it, which is actually a pretty nice curve, curve for this I think. 
can come in like that. You could do a bigger curly Q. Let's use the bigger one coming out from here. And then I'm going to carry this one down like that. Since that's a big curly cue, it's kind of substantial. It kind of needs a more substantial tail, I think. So then we have something like that. So you don't have to follow something in a book or in a photograph. Um, you know, just use parts and pieces and, and put things together the way that looks pleasing to you and come up with a new design. And I do recommend that you go ahead and you scan these and put them in your computer. Scan them as a JPEG so you can use your picture formatting option on your computer. And then um, you can um, make your background transparent so that when you put these pieces together, you don't have... Um, it's, of course, it's going to come out as a rectangle or a square because that's just the way pictures are. And you won't have part of one picture overlapping the, the other and then blocking some of the design. It'll be transparent so you can see through them. So that's why I do that. You want to make your background transparent. Now if you want to, if you have um, any other kind of photo editing software uh, like Photoshop or something like that or GIMP, you know, you use those and they kind of, you know, you can use layers on those and make uh, your designs up that way. But just play around with them and see what you can come up with. And um, you'll probably come up with some really neat ideas, I think. So anyway, I hope this helps. So I hope this gave you some ideas on how you can use a set of French curves to make some quilting designs. And I hope I gave you some good ideas of where you can come up with inspiration to make your own designs. And uh, I hope you all are staying, staying safe and staying healthy, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.